Hey, good morning folks. This is Dave Kaiser. I'm here with Andrew Wilson of Angel Water. It's my pleasure today to introduce you to Andrew Wilson with Angel Water because several things. Number one, he loves water as well as I do. He's educated in it. He's here today to give us a quick description on water softeners. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrew Wilson. Take Hi guys. So uh, today what we're doing is we are going to talk about water softeners. Our main goal though is we're going to have a recording and live presentation every first Saturday of every month. So we're gonna do things like uh, talk about water heaters one, one week or one month. We're gonna talk about reverse osmosis. We're gonna talk about battery backup sump pumps. We're gonna talk about you know virtually everything that has to do with water in your home. Uh, this is our first kickoff. We have a couple people who are here, so we're grateful for them to show. Every Saturday, the first Saturday of every month, we're gonna have host coffee and donuts and our bagels, and so we certainly want you guys to uh, come on down and, and ask questions, uh, you know, if you have any, or log online with Facebook and uh, ask questions there so we can, you know, uh, get any questions you have regarding uh, the topic of the month. Uh, today's topic is water softeners, so I'm going to uh, begin right with that. Our water softeners, uh, what are they? A lot of people don't really understand what water softeners are. They're that silly little thing that sits in the corner of the basement. It's kind of goofy. Cobwebs grow on it, and people just, they get all dirty and black and oily, and they're like, I hate that thing. I don't you just eat salt. But uh, water softener is actually very important because it removes minerals out of your water. Minerals are what ruins your plumbing system, it ruins clothing, it causes dry itchy skin, and it causes your hair to get uh, dry and brittle. So these are some of the things that uh, water softeners actually are going to remove out of the water. It's gonna remove the minerals that are in the water so that you don't have those sort of problems. So uh, a lot of people really don't uh, quite understand all those benefits, and so I wanna make sure that we first understand uh, what what are the problems and then how we're gonna make your water better. So those problems like dry itchy skin, uh, white scale on your dishes, white scale on your uh, dishwasher, white scale on your shower stall. Oh my God, I've seen so many different things that the white film causes. And what it basically is, is bedrock. Bedrock attaches itself to the water molecule. Um, as an example, if I have, uh, actually toss me that, <laughs> orange, if this is a water droplet, uh, a calcium ion actually attaches itself to the water molecule, and as that travels through the plumbing, it comes off the water molecule, and it either attaches to the plumbing, the inside of the plumbing tube, or it gets uh, scale buildup on your dishes, your silverware, your hair, your skin, and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so, uh, when we talk about what a water softener is gonna do, it's gonna remove that calcium off of that water molecule, so that you don't have any of the problems that, are, that uh, persist with it. So um, I took a couple notes as to what people talk about. Some of the other advantages of the water softener, it keeps your water bill um, lower. A lot of customers uh, have written in to me over the years and have asked me, oh, what are the other benefits to it other than those things I just mentioned? And your water bill gets reduced. Your cleaning supply bill gets reduced because when white film or this bedrock gets attached to, to your dishes and your sink and your shower, you use more water to clean that off. You also use more cleaning supplies to clean that off. So it really becomes very expensive. In fact, Costco did a study and they said that 20% of your grocery bill is spent on cleaning supplies, which is really staggering. The average family spends $200 on grocery bills. So that would tell you that you're spending $40 a week just on cleaning supplies. That'd be Windex, Pine Sol, Tide. In fact, Tide is a great example. I mean, when you take a look at Tide, it comes with a big cup, right? You fill that cup up and you put it in your laundry detergent, you wash your laundry. What you need to realize, the majority of that cup is filled with liquid softening agents. A lot of customers don't realize, actually, the lar largest water softener company in the world is Procter & Gamble because what they're doing is they're manufacturing so much liquid Tide, liquid soap products for your laundry, and the main goal of it is to soften the water. So if you remove the calcium with the water softener first, the amount of soap that you, can, you use diminishes. You can only use a tablespoon. So if you already have a water softener and you know the water's soft, remember, drop how much soap you're gonna use because that's a huge benefit. And as a result, your water bill will also be reduced and so that's another one of these wonderful benefits that people uh, that we've highlighted for people. When we take a look at how it saves your appliances, 
Not only does it protect the inside of the copper pipe you know, from scaling up and getting smaller and reduce water pressure in your home, it also uh, extends the life of your water heater. Your water heater, you have to remember, um, is uh, heats water with flames, and when you heat water, that calcium likes to come off of the water, uh, off the water molecule, and it builds up on the bottom of the water heater and the sides. And when it does that, that starts to create this thick layer of rock. Like literally, as a plumbing company, we've taken out water heaters, we've cut them open, and when we open it up, we see this big rock on the bottom of the water heater. And you're just like, it's crazy, because what you're doing is the flame is heating the steel, which then has to heat this rock. That's how these water heaters become inefficient. In fact, starting just three years ago, water heaters are completely different than the, we were, they were ever made before. Today's water heaters, because of federal guidelines, are way more efficient than they ever were before. So, as a result, they're not the same old ones that might have lasted you 20 years, they're more sensitive. So, the manufacturer does suggest that you use a water softener to remove that rock out of the water. In fact, standard with a water heater is what's called a, um, uh, oh, it's drawing a blank out right now. Tell me? Anorod, thanks Dave, yeah, an anorod. So an anorod is inside the water heater and what that's designed to do is have those ions attract to the rod versus the wall of the water heater. The manufacturer also tells you you should be rinsing or uh, flushing your water heater at least once a year. Uh, if you have very hard water, you should be flushing it every couple months. In our market, Barrington, you had 32 grains of hardness, you need to flush it once a month if you don't have a water, if you don't have a water softener. So these are some of the benefits, and when you're taking a look at a water heater today that's gonna, the average cost is $2,200, boy, it's t t completely worth taking a look at a water softener to remove that rock so it doesn't cause those kind of problems for your plumbing system. Now, the, um, uh, let's take a look at some of the other benefits that uh, we've, oh, that we've uh, mentioned for cl customers over the years. Uh, there's been many studies that when you, because we're heating, the uh, steel, if you remove that rock out of the water, then what you do is your efficiency gets better. So you use less natural gas. So in the long run, not only are you saving money on the appliances, you're protecting the appliances and extending their lives, but you're actually using less gas, natural gas, to actually heat the water. Because as you can imagine, if we're heating the steel and then rock and then the water, that becomes very, very inefficient. So again, with especially with the new water heaters and how energy efficient they are, because they have better insulation than they had before, um, you want to you want to consider a water softener for that reason. Uh, let's take a look. It makes your hair softer. Oh my God, I cannot tell you how many people that I've met that sit there and say, yeah, exactly. They feel their hair. They're like, they they meet me and they go, oh my God, my you know my hair is awful. It just feels bad. You know, I don't have that problem because I don't have much of it. But they're like, my hair. I got to go see a. Uh, hairstylist and they charge me all this money to chemically treat my water because there's something wrong with it and a, one day it just feels bad. Boy, when you put in a water softener, you can feel the difference immediately. First of all, you can reduce the amount of soap you buy. And I think, you know, there's some girls in the audience here. You guys spend a lot of money on, uh, on shampoos and conditioners, right? So they're all nodding their head. Uh, they don't want to be live on TV. I, <laughs> and I don't blame them. <laughs> it's a little awkward. But uh, when, you, when you buy uh, laundry deter or you know, shampoo, it's very expensive. When you buy uh, hair conditioner, that's also very expensive. And so again, that's designed to actually help pull the calcium off of your hair follicles. So if you removed it with a water softener first down in the basement, then you use a whole less, less, less uh, shampoo. In fact, you can move from you know, using a whole handful to a thumbnail full. It's just crazy. Kathy's shaking her head here because yeah. she's got a new water softener. I use a pea-sized drop of shampoo and it gives all my hair total lather up. Yeah, what she told the audience here is that she uses a pea-sized yes. amount of uh, shampoo and it totally lathers up. And you have to cut the soap you use. Because if you continue to use so much, it gets so much on your hair that you just can't seem to rinse it off. Because people do complain about slimy, a slimy feeling uh, with the water. But what that is, is that's actually like natural rainfall. Rainfall doesn't have calcium on it. And if you were to wash your hair or take a shower in the, in the rain, you wouldn't have, you'd have that slippery feeling because there's no calcium to it. 
So there are some uh, people complain, there are complaints people have with water softeners and it's usually, oh, it's too soft, but our answer is give your body six weeks. The pores of your skin take six weeks to get accustomed to soft water. Also, you need to drastically drop the amount of soap that you use. When you drastically drop the amount of soap, it, it's much easier to rinse that off. So that's a couple of the quick uh, little uh, notes on that. And speaking of your skin, the skin is the largest organ of your body. So when you take a look at that and you say to yourself, wow, that's an organ, and you go, yeah, you want to rinse that organ with super clean water, not with bedrock, and preferably not with chlorine in the water, because your skin is just all these little pores. So when you have calcium hitting it and filling up those pores with rock, it causes dry, itchy skin. It's the number one reason for dry, itchy skin, according to some people, is, is the calcium that's in water, or the minerals that are in water. So when you use a water softener to take that off, it helps alleviate that problem. So especially coming in the wintertime when we all tend to get dry itchy skin because our, you know, in the northern hemisphere anyhow here, uh, we have to use furnaces and the, the humidity in our, in Chicagoland anyhow, drops drastically. So as a result, we start to get drier skin and boy, what it compounds that problem is calcium in the water and or chlorine in the water. So uh, if you have dry itchy skin, that's another, um, that's another culprit for it. If you have eczema, oh, we've had tons of people who have just you know, been so grateful that they bought a water softener when they've had eczema. Uh, in fact, a lot of them uh, who've had eczema actually step up to a water softener with a carbon filter to remove the chlorine out of the water. So most people in the Chicagoland area, um, a huge population have city water. In the cities in the Chicagoland area, including downtown Chicago, they take the water either out of the earth and they put it in the water tower and they add chlorine to it. Or if you're in Lake Michigan, where you get Lake Michigan water, they're taking it out of that big hole in the ground and they're adding chlorine to it and sending it to people's homes. One thing I want to sort of spell out here for you is they have what's called treatment plants. So you're paying this money for your water bill and you have to understand most cities don't have filtration centers. They're called treatment plants. And what they're doing is they're actually taking the water and treating it with chlorine. So treating it with chlorine means that that chlorine, which is very, you know, it's very aggressive, that also dries out the skin, dries out the hair. So some newer water softeners and very high-end water softeners will include a filter material called carbon to be able to absorb that chlorine out of the water. So um, I'm going to show you those in a couple minutes just so that you can sort of understand them all. Uh, with one of the biggest health benefits that a lot of people don't understand, now this is probably the very best part about a water softener. Because here at Angel Water, we're not only um, a water softener company and a water filtration company, but we're a licensed plumbing company. So our goal is to make your water healthy. In fact, by the way, if you are going to install a water softener, remember, use a licensed plumber. Uh, licensed plumbers are required in the state of Illinois. I mean, there is some gray area in this, but overall, if someone's going to install a water softener that, that the wastewater from the water softener gets tied to your sewer system, it's required to be done by a licensed plumber. We do a lot of Costco work, so Costco is one of our great clients, and they required us to be a licensed plumber because they analyze the law here in Illinois, and it needs to require, they, their research shows you have to be a licensed plumber. So we are that, and what I can tell you about that is as a licensed plumber, we're concerned about your health. So two things that you need to understand as water softener does is if you tie it in correctly to the home, it's gonna protect your family from getting uh, sick by, by, uh, the, by the discharge being properly uh, dropped into your sewer system. The second thing about it is a water softener actually removes radium 228 and 226 out of the water. Oh, it also removes barium out of the water. So, um, these are carcinogens in the city water supplies, and we can prove that or see that thanks to the Environmental Working Group. The Environmental Working Group went out, it's a, called EWG.org, they went out to the EPA website and they pulled out all this data to sort of see what cities report that's in their water. And consistently throughout the whole Chicagoland area, there is radium-228, 226, and barium in the water. So now these things cause cancer. Now, they're not at the, the level of radium in most of the city levels is below EPA standards, but the EPA standards are set in 1972. So we look at it, we're like, okay, 
Here's this old standard. I was just barely born, by the way. Uh, <laughs> all right, I was born a couple years before that. But anyhow, uh, 1972. So here's the standards that they set in 1972, and they're t saying that this is what's appropriate today. Well, back in 1972, we could only measure contaminants in parts per millions. Today, we can measure contaminants in parts per trillions. Back then, they say that this is what's healthy, uh, or what's safe for our environment, but to, and most of, the, most of the country is actually following those old EPA guidelines, but if you take a look at California, there's new standards called health guideline rules. And if you take a look at those health guideline rules, the level of radium that's in our water, in most of the Chicago land, exceeds that. So when we look at that, we're like, okay, well, well, we are passionate about making you guys more healthy. So in order to do that, we want to use a very high quality water software that takes radium out of the water. Now, there's a whole bunch of different types of water softeners, and I'm going to show you these so that you can understand the benefits of it. Because not only are we going to do all those aesthetic issues with a water softener, but this health side is what's really drives our company. Our company why is about making you more healthy. So it's not just about making sure your plumbing looks good. It's not just about making your clothes look good. I mean, I, that's one thing I forgot, by the way, is clothes get dingy with calcium in the water, so with minerals in the water. So the water softener makes your clothes brighter and cleaner. And so that's one of the real good benefits of this. But, but from a health aspect, this is removing radium out of the water. It's protecting your family. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the systems that are out there right now. I set them up behind me here. And uh, I'm gonna start with salt-free water softener because some of you here have heard of salt-free water softeners. Kathy has heard them on the phone, right? Do you guys have salt-free water softeners? We do, we have them, but we want to be very, very clear with what they do. It's these two systems at the very end. Uh, salt-free water softeners are, they are uh, designed, they, the manufacturer says, to prevent scale within the plumbing system. Now, unfortunately, so many people, so many companies, make you believe by their Google reviews or their uh, video testimonies that it makes your clothes brighter, it's, you know, it protects your dishes and you do all these other things. I gotta tell you, we've sold them and we've had to refund people's money because they were not happy. So, I mean, we were all excited when this product came out. We're like, yay, we don't have to deliver salt anymore. We got these new great products, they're gonna do wonders. But the reality is they don't. So. They don't do a lot of the benefits that you're looking at. The only thing that they do is prevent scale inside the plumbing pipe. Again, that would be these tubes. That's all they do is re prevent that scale from getting building up inside there and reducing the pressure in your home. That's the only thing they do. They also remove chlorine out of the water because most of the time they will come with carbon so that it absorbs the chlorine and makes the water more enjoyable. It, it tastes a little bit better. So when you take a shower, you're like, oh, my dry your skin is not so bad. The reality is it doesn't remove calcium. So I wanna make sure that's clear so that if you're looking at your dishes, looking at your laundry, you still need to use a full cup of soap. It's still gonna cause dry your skin for most customers. So when we sold these, we ended up having some problems. Now, we tell people we still sell them, and we do, if that's what they're looking for. But I can tell you that most people wanna buy it because they wanna stop buying salt. And I'd love to be able to tell you that, that hey, that's the case, but it's not. So I know online, if you guys are good looking for water softeners, or if you've been buying one, or you bought one recently, we have, I can't tell you how many of these systems that we've taken out of people's homes. They look fancy. They're like people are like, oh my God, the thing's gonna do wonders. The reality is, this is just a stainless steel jacket over a fiberglass tank. That's all it is. So it looks good. You spend $2,000 on it, and the only thing it's gonna do is prevent scale inside the plumbing. So when we, what, the only thing that really does work is what's called ion exchange, and that's when we exchange, take the calcium off the water molecule, and what we do is the water softener basically, it gets attached to one of these little uh, resin beads. This is a little bit larger than sand, and so what happens is the water passes through this, the calcium gets attached to this resin bead. And so you can see, a, clear water softener that we have here, you can see that what would happen is the water would flow down, attach itself to the resin beads, and then it would sit there. And so what we use to clean that calcium off of that is salt. So it's pretty sad. You can use salt or you can use potassium chloride. If you're, if you're on a salt-restricted diet, 
you know, the best thing to do is be able to, one, you can get a very high efficiency water softener that rinses itself very clean and there's less salt in a, a glass of water than there is in a slice of white bread, or you need to get a reverse osmosis system to take that salt out. Some customers do buy potassium chloride, but it's very, very expensive. It's about $20 a bag. So you can go down that road. We have a lot of clients who do. It just seems to me very expensive when you can get a drinking water system that takes that salt back out. But uh, you know, that's each their own. So uh, when we look at a water softener, it's pretty basic. You know, as the water passes through the resin, it gets attached. We use salt to clean it. And by the way, during the cleaning cycle, this filter material lifts up. And that's why we have what's called headroom on here. And that's so that that filter material gets a chance to get loose and let go of the calcium. So that's what makes some of these bigger units worthwhile because they have what's called headroom. And that headroom allows it to clean itself properly. The cheaper units on the market, um, and that would be these guys down here, Water Boss, GE, we're the service center for those companies, and they pack the resin all the way to the very top. So the units uh, don't last very long. In fact, in some most cases, the cheaper water softeners now are made in China, and they use Chinese resin. So they don't have the certification for moving radium out of your water. So that's one of the reasons why we really love the Eco Water system. Eco Water is one of the only completely NSF certified products to remove radium 228, 226, and bearing out of your water. So when we look at that, we're like, okay, well, is it more expensive? Yes. Does it come with a better warranty? Yes. Does it have America, is it made in America? Yes. Does it use the least amount of salt in the industry? Yeah, boy, if you don't like to carry lug salt down the stairs, uh, this is the right product to buy because it uses the least amount of salt in the industry. Uh, and, but most importantly, is it does remove that radium 228 and 226 out of the water. So there is the health benefit of the higher grade equipment. The cheaper stuff, it's, they, they, not all of them are certified. And they usually only come with a one year warranty. So I can give you a rough idea. Some of these units down here, they're gonna run you, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. This unit here, this is an old school unit. It's funny because water softeners are like, if you look at, they're like sort of like cars, but they still manufacture them. Uh, today's water softeners, um, you can get high-end technology, or you can still buy the 1972 technology. So unlike cars where they phase out the old cars, the water softeners, they're online, when you buy them online, you have this old 1970 technology that's filtering your water. So the manufacturers, have, all they've done is move their manufacturing to China, and now they still sell them to some dealers in the Chicagoland area. We can buy them, we just see that there's not very many good benefits to the older school water softeners, so we really don't sell them. They do reduce your overall price, but again, they're made in China, they use more salt, they don't clean themselves that well. Um, but it's, it's interesting, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, they don't, if you look at a 1972 car, it didn't have an airbag, it didn't have ABS brakes, it didn't have crumple zones, it didn't have colla collapsible steering column. So it didn't, it didn't have a lot of these safety features that the higher quality products would have. And as you step up with the higher quality products, yes, the price does go up, but there's tremendous value to those. And so you as a consumer, you have to sort of figure out what you really want. If you're looking for something short term, then one, one, maybe one of the cheaper ones will work for you. But if you're looking for health and welfare of your family, if you're looking for long term or longevity of the equipment because you're gonna be in your home for a long time, one of the higher quality products is probably better. Now, um, I think that we're about done. So I, I, I'm looking through my notes. I think that we basically talked about everything on a water softener. I don't know if there's uh, any questions in the audience. Yeah, I asked them to ask questions. If anyone has any questions, just go ahead and log online. Uh, and if you don't, we're just gonna go ahead and shore up the, the uh, Facebook Live. We hope people are uh, enjoyed it. And uh, we appreciate the crew that stopped by here to watch this today. So again, if you wanna come out to see us at Angel Water, every month we're gonna do an educational video. We're gonna do another post shortly to sort of decide what it's gonna be as a plumbing company. It might be water heaters next month. We might do well water systems. We, we might do what it's like to own a house with a private well, septic systems. We're gonna talk about every month, we're gonna talk about something that has to do with your uh, household. So again, uh, I'm Andrew Wilson from Angel Water. We appreciate you joining us and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.